welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzle K, and today we are going to watch the press conference in the Michael Vaughan case together. If you haven't followed any of my Michael Vaughan coverage, there is a playlist for it. Um, and I'm also joined by a special guest today, Nebulous True Crime. Welcome. Hi, G. Hi, Grizzlies. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks for being here. I've told you guys about the website that Nebulous True Crime actually made. Um, do you want to tell them a little bit about it? Um, yeah, it, it's findmichaelvaughan.com. Uh, myself and my subscribers, we, we built a website over the course of a few months. We used to do Monkey Monday and we used to do a stream every week. And we were like, what can we do to help find this little boy, help find the family? So we made some posters and then eventually we ended up building a website because we wanted to help them centralize everything, like have one place for all the posters, have one place where people can go and fill out a form to request flyers that can help a place where people can go and reach out and leave a message for the family, a place for tips and just little photographs as well of, of Michael and things that he likes or more insight into, in, into that kind of stuff. And that's how it came exactly. about really. Yeah. Thank you for making that for everyone as well. It's really nice to just see the updates on here. You've got latest updates, city of Fruitland police, how you can, uh, how can you help find monkey? Um, so yeah, you guys, Jody says, I love your accent. I don't know if it's me or Nevelis, but I mean, I'm South African <laughs> living in the Netherlands and Nevelis is Irish. <laughs> yeah, you get a so, dose from here or anywhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So you guys, I will make sure that I put this in the pinned comments afterwards. It's findmichaelvaughan.com. If you know nothing about the, this case, I'm quickly going to give you a brief overview by reading this article. The press conference is happening in 12 minutes from now. <laughs> yeah, Cha Cha B says, thanks for slowing. I might slow down a bit. How many have we got here? Almost a thousand. I put subscribers only mode on for now, you guys. Um, and that means you only have to subscribe for one minute and then you could chat along with us. I'll put slow mode on now as well, just to prepare for everything. I've got all the links open um, for the press conference, but if I need your, your help, you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Caroline says the correct answer is what accent? <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay. and I, I think gee, you're a bit like me as well when I'm live or excited or nervous my accent gets a small bit thicker than when I'm usually <laughs> kind of making videos and, and talking right sometimes they're like is this on 1.5 speed <laughs> no it's just me talking fast exactly and both of us we were chatting you guys behind the scenes we all I'm sure you guys also we're very nervous for this news today in the Michael Vaughan case so let me just read this to you and then just in case someone doesn't know about the case but man the big question is did they find and that's such a horrible question, but but we need the closure. Did they find him in that excavation of the backyard? So I'm just quickly going to read this. Hold on. Sorry, clearing my throat there. <laughs> okay, so Boise, Idaho, Fruitland Police announced that they will be holding a news conference to announce the latest information regarding the Michael Vaughan case. The conference is scheduled for Thursday, December 1st at 1 p.m., mountain time right mst in a press release the department specified that this is not a public event and intended only for media to access the live stream click here so we, we go and be clicking that <laughs> yeah okay they take us to their channel clicking that already on november 23rd fruitland police department chief jd have confirmed crews finishing um uh, sorry finished the processing the entire home of Red Wing Street in Fruitland, where investigators were looking for the possible remains of six-year-old Michael Vaughan, who went missing from his neighborhood on July 27th, 2021. Uh, thank you so much to D Nentwick for that. And I think I missed one earlier. Thank you so, so much, you guys, for supporting the channel. Okay, investigators had been out at the home in Fruitland since late on the night of November 11th, excavating a backyard where 35-year-old Sarah Wanderer was one of the occupants. Wander was arrested November 12th in connection to Vaughan's possible death and charged with failure to report a death. Have told KTBB search crews finished processing the entire home and yard on Wednesday. Investigators stopped digging on the property Friday, November 18th. Payette County prosecutors said in Wander's November 14th arraignment that she failed to notify law enforcement of the death of Vaughan. That was a very sad day to hear that. With intent to prevent discovery of the manner of death. Don't ask me where my voice is going today, you guys. Okay, a Pied County magistrate judge on Monday determined Sarah Wanderer is currently mentally unfit to proceed. Wanderer's attorney appeared in court via Zoom on Monday for a status conference. Judge Brian 
D. Lee reset the conference for the morning of Friday, December 23rd. A preliminary hearing previously set for Tuesday, November 22nd, had already been vacated. Online court records show Lee on Monday also issued a commitment order pursuant to the Idaho law about determination of fitness to proceed in a criminal case. Wandra is being transferred to custody of the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare for treatment. The commitment order indicates she was found unfit to assist in her own defense. Therefore, proceedings against Wandra are on hold. One day before Wandra was arrested, investigators began searching the Fruitland home after receiving a lead that came from what have called a very credible tip related to the disappearance of Vaughan. Failure to notify or delaying notification of a death is a felony punishable by up to 10 years in prison and a $1,000 fine if found guilty. Idaho does not have an insanity defense, but under state law, no person who, as a result of mental illness, lacks capacity to understand the proceedings against him or assist in his own defense shall be tried, convicted, sentenced, or punished, so long as incapacity endures. Competency evaluations are conducted by at least one court-appointed psychiatrist or psychologist. While the community waits for more updates on the search, a community Facebook group has scheduled a candlelight prayer circle for Michael and his family on Wednesday, November 23rd at 6 p.m. Okay, so that already happened in the gazebo. Um, organizers ask that you bring a candle as they pray for Michael, which I say is that already happened. The tip line is in the description box, you guys, 208-343-2677 or... Cops, if you can't remember, you know, choose your eight three four three cops, or you can email findmichael at fruitland.org. Okay. Uh Lisa says, do they have a cause of death yet? They haven't even we don't know that they've even found him yet. <laughs> so that's what we're waiting for today. Nev, any comments from you? Um Let's see this. No, just that like we don't know whether Sarah is insane or not. She said a lot of right. stuff they turned up that day, but they had a search warrant before they turned up, so they would have a probable cause in the search warrant before she said anything. So right. uh, no idea. It could go either way. Yeah. She could be playing her cards or she could actually not be well. <laughs> you know, I don't think she was the most mentally stable lady, especially not from the statements she made when they started, when they arrested her. She's like, oh, oh yeah, you know, I didn't do anything, but my husband, yeah. He killed him and buried him in the backyard. What? Wow. I'd love okay. to know why they turned up there that day, or what they had as a probable cause to search. That'd be yes, very exactly. Yes, it would. My gosh, these poster boards. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, Here yeah, we go. Sound on, have. sound on. Yes. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to start out by saying thank you uh, to our media partners. Thanks for being here. Uh, and Thank you for the continued coverage of the Michael Vaughn case. Uh, I also wanted to begin by just giving my uh, sincere thanks to all the law enforcement agencies, local businesses, and members of the public who helped us over the course of the last year and a half uh, of this intense investigation. Uh, more recently, during the last three weeks, we could not have completed the work necessary without the selfless help of others. The community support has been absolutely incredible. As you know, from the time Michael went missing, this has been an all hands on deck investigation and it remains very active and an ongoing investigation. You can't take one of our most precious citizens from us and ever expect us to stop. During the course of this investigation to date, we received credible information that the remains of Michael Vaughn could be found in the backyard at 1102 Red Wing Street in Fruitland. As a result, the Fruitland Police Department obtained a search warrant for the residents along with the front and backyards. That search warrant was served on November 11th. Uh, it was a Friday. We served that late in the evening. Upon entry, officers encountered Sarah Wandra, one of the known occupants of the home and Sarah was subsequently arrested based on probable cause that she had knowledge of Michael's death and failed to report that death to law enforcement. The following day, the Fruitland Police Department joined by the Idaho State Police, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue, the Fruitland Fire Department, and the Fruitland Public Works Department began a very methodical excavation of the backyard of the Wanderers' home. 
During that excavation process, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue Mountain States Detection Dogs deployed multiple certified human remains detection dogs on the property, all of them alerting to the presence of human remains. Ground penetrating radar was also used and deployed uh, detecting anomalies in the backyard. Uh, we completed the excavation of the entire backyard and removed over 250 yards of dirt. Prior to backfilling the yard, the dirt was meticulously sifted for any potential human remains. We did not find Michael's remains. Although the remains of Michael Vaughn were not recovered, we strongly believe, based on evidence, that Michael was abducted and is deceased, and that his remains were buried and later moved from the property. As of today, the whereabouts of his remains are unknown. However, the investigation is active, fluid, and ongoing. Once the excavation was complete, we conducted a thorough search of the Wanderer's residence. The search was productive and additional investigative evidence was, re was recovered and is currently being processed. Evidence suggests that there are the following individuals who are currently in custody are involved in the abduction of Michael Vaughn. This is Sarah Wandra, 35 years old. Sarah lives at 1102 Red Wing Street in Fruitland and was living there at the time of Michael's disappearance. We believe that Sarah has firsthand knowledge and is involved in Michael's abduction. Sarah Wandra is currently being held at the Payette County Jail for failing to report a death to law enforcement. This is Sarah's husband, Stacy Wandra, 30 years old, a male. Stacy was also living at 1102 Red Wing Street in Fruitland and was living there at the time of Michael's disappearance. We believe that Stacy has firsthand knowledge and is involved in the abduction of Michael Vaughn. Stacy's currently being held in the Washington County Jail on unrelated charges. Now, the next individuals I'm going to introduce you to. Um, let's go at the bottom there. This is Brandon Shirtliff, 30 years old of Cuna, Idaho. Brandon was living with Sarah and Stacy Wandra at 1102 Red Wing Street at the time of Michael's disappearance. And we believe Brandon has firsthand knowledge of Michael's abduction. Brandon is currently to believe, believed to be in North Dakota. Adrian Lucien, 32-year-old 32 32 male out of Toledo, Ohio. Adrian was staying with Sarah and Stacy Wander at 1102 Red Wing Street at the time of Michael's disappearance. And we believe that Adrian has firsthand knowledge of Michael's abduction. Adrian's currently believed to be in Toledo, uh, but floats between Ohio and California. I strongly encourage Shirtliff and Lucien to contact the Fruitland Police Department detectives as the window of time for talking and cooperation is coming to a close. This remains an active and ongoing investigation with conversations taking place with the Payette County Prosecutor's Office about Michael's case and those individuals involved. We also believe that there are others associated with the Wanderers, Shirtlift and Lucene, who may have knowledge of Michael's abduction and I would strongly encourage them to come forward and speak, speak with my detectives. When we finally reach the conclusion of this investigation, and I can assure you that we will, all of those who have knowledge of Michael's disappearance and have failed to report or hindered our investigation will be pursued. There's a moment in time to do the right thing and bring your information forward and cooperate. And that moment in time is now. To date, the Fruitland Police Department has received over 1,500 tips and leads, and we received many new leads since this phase of the investigation has began. We continue to ask our communi community for support and patience as we continue to aggressively work this case. 
We also ask that the Vaughn's fam Vaughn family's privacy continue to be respected and we'll continue to post updates as information can be shared. Tips can be sent to findmichael at fruitland.org or to crimestoppers at 343cops.com or the Fruitland Police Department at 208-452-3110. Tipsters can remain anonymous. So uh, before I open it up for questions, uh, I just wanna make it clear that this is a very active and ongoing investigation. Um, it's, it's super important uh, that we maintain the integrity of this investigation. So I'd ask you that you'd please tailor your questions accordingly. With that, I'll stand for a few questions. Alex? Um, so if Michael's remains are not found, will Sarah have to be released or do you think that she will remain in jail um, once you locate the other people that you think are involved? It is my belief that she will remain in custody. But again, we're in talks with the Payette County prosecutor um, and those talks are ongoing as far as charging. And you can't speak to any additional evidence that was found in the house once you said you can't? I cannot. Again, I just don't want to jeopardize the integrity of this investigation. Leslie. Is listed in the, as an inmate in Washington County Jail, but he's not on the Idaho court records because it's uh, currently with federal hold. Are there any other charges aside from hers uh, that have been filed in relation to this? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Not at this point. Go ahead. What was different about the tip you received in this case after you know 1,500 tips over the last almost year and a half? What led to the arrest and the search? Can you share any more about what led you to that home? You know, I, I don't want to get into the to, to the details on that, but I can assure you that the tip that we received was credible. Um, I also released that in an early earlier statement that it came from one of the occupants of the home, which led to that. Yes. Um, I'm sure that you guys in your investigation are following social media pages, which a lot of us have looked at. Um, and one of them indicates a trip out of state taken within the time frame. I, I mean, without hampering the investigation, you guys are at least aware of that trip taken to get a dog? We um, are currently aware of a lot. Okay. And so I would tell you that um, you just need to trust us and trust in this investigation. Uh, we're making tremendous progress. We're comfortable with where we're at. I appreciate that question. Um, so Sarah Wonder didn't pass her um, mental evaluation or when they were in the hearing and things. Do you think this affects the investigation at all considering um, that to be the case? I do not, not at this point. There have been mentions of a neighbor's yard. Has that been um, searched in any way or taken into consideration in this investigation? Yes, as a matter of fact, we'll be deploying ground uh, penetrating radar in the neighbor's yard tomorrow. Okay. So we, we haven't done that yet, but we will. That's on the that's on the agenda for tomorrow. So thank you. Okay, aside from just living with the laundry, do we know what the relationship with the Kinetic remains? Were, how are they uh, connected with the laundry? You know, I'm not, this is ongoing. I'm not going to get into the semantics and dynamics of uh, the relationship there. Alex? Um, a lot of neighbors spoke to us about a scooter that you guys were looking for. Can you speak to anything about like you guys found a scooter or if that was related or if that's something that you were possibly looking for at the Washington Park Peninsula? You know, um, again, that's, um, that's evidentiary in nature and, and I'm not going to speak to that at this point. Um, you mentioned the other property that's going to be uh, starting to be searched tomorrow. Um, are there warrants for any other properties besides that? You know, not at this point, but, you know, through the course of this investigation, I believe that there are other locations that we will definitely be searching. So there is no warrant for the search uh, that we're going to do tomorrow. It's, it's all consensual. So I appreciate that. Was the warrant um, that was executed in CUNA um, in recent weeks related to Brandon Shirtless? Um, we did not have a warrant for any home uh, in CUNA. But was there a search related so, to his home? Yes, there was. Um, you said that you believe that one of them is in North Dakota. You haven't located him yet. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Do you mind spelling your last name, Caleb? I'm sorry. Sure, I can. 
You obviously have the Wanderer's last name, correct? Okay. Um, last of Shirtliff is um, S H U R T L I F F. Last of Lucien is L U C I E N N E. Okay. All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions, uh, I'm going to conclude this uh, press conference. Karen, one more. One more. Um, if um, neither of these individuals do come forward with information, could they face any charges related to covering an investigation or anything like that? You know, I, I would tell you that, um, A, I'm not going to discuss our, our investigative strategies at this point, um, but it is my belief that charges are forthcoming. Just one last question. I know you're very proud of your team that's, that's really done a, an amazing job so far. Can you talk more about that and about how, how they're doing? You, you know, um, it's got to be tough. It is tough. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've lived this case from the time that it began. And, um, but I'm telling you, I've got a, a very strong, committed group of people here. And uh, they come in here every day and we're in this grind and uh, they are committed uh, to finding Michael. And uh, we're, we're, we're just not going to stop. Everybody should know that we are not going to stop until we uncover the truth um, in its entirety, I would say. So thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. And yes, everyone, that is Chris McDonough from the interview room. Yeah, oh I actually gosh. touched on that in one of my last videos, but. Chris has been in Fruitland for 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 a while with the Cold Case Foundation. They've been yeah. they've been helping out, but he hasn't said anything on his channel about it because he can't as long as this is ongoing and especially being tied to the Cold Case Foundation as well. But as far exactly. as I know, they've done some really good stuff and they've been a big help to the case and the family. Wow, that's really great to hear. But man, today's news was terrible. Really sad. That's the worst, isn't it? So it's really yeah. you didn't think it could get worse but i mean it just did it's just wow so if you, anyone's just joining now thank you for being here we just watched the press conference together um in the michael vaughn case they excavated the wanderer's backyard and we were really hoping as sad as it was you know i hate saying the sentence but we were really hoping that they'd find his remains in the backyard so there can be closure and the family can know you know what happened to him and there can be yeah. the fight for justice but now even though they used ground penetrating radar and cadaver dogs and everything, uh, which did pick up the you know human remains in the backyard. They didn't find Michael Vaughan's remains or yeah. anyone else's, I would assume. So that is horrible. And tomorrow they're searching the neighbor's yard. Is do you know who the neighbor is? Is it that um, SO? Yeah, <laughs> I believe there's an SO that lives next door, right? Yeah, yeah. But he's he's fully cooperative. He's like whatever you need, like like do it. Um. Yeah. Like even if they searched the backyard and they were like, there's no signs that he was buried there at all, you might have some hope of him being out there alive. But this is just the worst being told. We believe he is dead. We believe he was buried in the backyard. And we believe he was moved. And we have exactly. no idea where he is. That is the worst. I can't imagine it. Oh, my word. It reminds me of the, um, what were their names again? Orin and Orson. West? West, yeah. Well, that oh. was their adoptive name, I think, wasn't it? Yes, I yes, think. exactly. Sincere and classic. Yeah. It reminds me of that case a bit because it's also just like, it's the worst thing, you guys. And the four, I mean, those posters, we were worried about it. And it is worrying because they flipped it over and had four giant pictures of uh, suspects, persons of interest, of which Sarah Wanderer, has she divorced him now? Because I've heard two different stories. Did she actually divorce Stacey Lee Wanderer? I I don't think so, but she, she's a bit of a he he's locked up since May, and yes. a lot of the things in his case is redacted. Um, but we need to find those other two people now. They need to they need to start talking. Mm hmm. Exactly. So Sarah Wonder, you guys were asking in the chat earlier. Sarah Wonder, thirty five year old woman that was living at the house at the time, and Stacy Lee Wonder. Both of them are currently in jail. She's at the. Uh, Payette County Jail, and he's in the Washington County Jail. But the other two names they mentioned, I uh, don't believe we've heard before, Brandon Shirtliff and Adrian Lucen. 
I didn't quite catch the age of Brandon, but Adrian is 32 years old. They say he moves between Toledo, Ohio, Toledo, Ohio, and California. So those two yeah. are out there right now, you guys. So I think they're showing massive photos because keep a lookout. And if you see them, call the tip line or 911 or whoever you can remember to call. And I thought in the last update, the Fruitland Police, at the end of it, I was like, are they talking directly to someone? Because they're like, we want to, this inform. If you know anything about this, we want this information. No, and it was a bit more abrupt than in the past. And I was like, no, 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 that's just what they're usually kind of do. But they definitely were. They were talking to these two people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm surprised they haven't picked, had a chat room yet. To be honest, right? <laughs> but I expect <laughs> exactly. they will very soon. Probably yes. Uh, rock everything. Thank you. Said I think. They need to be interrogating more. Also, an earlier super sticker, I missed, sorry about that, it was Donna Stewart. Thank you so much for that as well. Okay. Uh, Angel Ray says, are these two the guys from that photograph in the car? I don't know. Do you know? I'm not sure about the the, the photograph in, in the white car. I, I can't make that out. But I think there is a photograph of Brandon on their Facebook pages um, oh laying gosh. on the couch. I remember the dude on the couch. Oh, my word. Yeah. And so they say these other two were living with them at the time. Yeah. I mean, it is absolutely months, yeah. terrifying to think they say there's not an accident. They believe that Michael Vaughn was abducted. So, oh, man. And then there's these four really scary people living in this house. It's just frightening to think about, honestly. Wow. Yeah. And they and can't they say, say what their relationship is. You know, how are they connected? That's also scary. Yeah. And, and and they're very confident as well. It seemed that he he was buried in the backyard. They said they used um, radar that seen discrepancies in the ground and all the dogs, yes. like, um, alerted there. And I, I I imagine there's probably maybe another little bit of evidence pointing to it as well. It's mm -hmm. just it's, it's the worst. It's the worst scenario we we could have hoped for today. Yes, I I, I agree. Uh, we got to keep it respectful. Boundaries, everyone. Keep it grizzly. Thank you so much for being here with us. Please um, share the video. Hashtag justice for Michael Vaughn. If you have any tips, please call it into the tip line. We're sending so much love to Michael Vaughn's family that what they are going through is unimaginable. I mean, it was already even that they found out on YouTube. Brandy found out on YouTube that they believe her son is deceased and in that backyard. You know, that that was horrible to watch. And it's kind of taken her hope there now because she's always so hopeful of Michael being found and coming home. Yes. And now that's been taken from her there now as well. And she still doesn't have her little boy back. Man, yeah. I can't imagine what they're going through. So sending lots of love, encouragement to Michael Vaughan's family. Um, I hope you guys will be kind to all families of victims of crime out there. And... You guys, <laughs> sorry, I'm just looking at some of the comments here. Thank you for being here. I think that the chat is it's getting quite hectic now. So we're going to go. We're going to chat behind the scenes. We've got lots to catch up on the Delphi stuff and all these other cases. Um, thank you so much, Rochelle. Uh, you say always so classy with your presentations at Grizzly True Crime. Thank you. If you guys haven't checked the video, I uploaded it just before this press conference, about 45 minutes before. It's about the Idaho Forward, the latest updates. Go check that out. <laughs> I have a similar tiny pep talk in there <laughs> like please guys empathy respect boundaries so it's kind of the theme for the day because i've been very very frustrated personally and i don't normally express that so much on my channel but please guys let's keep it grizzly thank you for being here victims first yes who said that let me just see sorry i missed your comment there flew by victims first families as well um and thank you all for for being wonderful i appreciate you thank you mods and i will see you guys again in the next one any closing words nev you want to plug your no. channel or anything? Um, no, just check out my channel if you're into some Grizzly stuff. You might be into some of mine. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, yeah. Grizzlies. Yeah, and thank, thank you, Nat, for being here. Okay, Grizzlies, I will see you again in the next one. Stay safe and look after yourself. Bye.